Pterodactyl here, and now we're on part five. One, two, three, four, five of the Palomino build. And I got my brake cable. My 20 inch long GER extended brake cable. And I didn't get it from that company that advertises that they'll make custom brake cables for you. I'm not gonna say who it is, but they never got back to me and we never were able to make the cable. And they said if they did make the cable, it was gonna be uh, over $100 with the shipping. So then I went online, of course, on the inner screen, and there's this place called VMC. VMC. Chinese parts. And sure enough, they had the cable the exact size I needed. You know how much this cable cost? $8.20. With the shipping, it was less than $15. So if you need any of those parts or you're looking for parts for a project, go to VMC. They got all those Chinese scooter parts there. And they'll help you out. They're real helpful. So now I gotta mount this there and then snake it along and then bring it up under here. Now the only thing I did is I had to add this to the end of it because it had a ball end for a handle, for a handbrake. So I added this little clevis or yoke to the end of it. And then I'm gonna take this and weld it to here. And then my cable will come through this hole and it'll mount to the top of the right there like that and then this will be welded onto that piece of angle so when I step on the brake it'll pull the cable that's a lot easier than putting a, a hydraulic clutch slave on there because then I got to run hydraulics and cable will work just fine all right, now I got my tank mounted. And I used uh, some Bobcat tank bracket straps for a Bobcat mower. They are a little long, so I had to cut them off. And then I got these bolts welded to these tabs. So I could cinch it up, and it's nice and tight. There's some rubber under here, rubber on the sides to kind of cushion it. And I started running the hose for the filler neck. And then I ran into a problem with the uh, electric fuel pump. It was pumping too much fuel to the carburetor and the carburetor was starting to leak and then it wasn't run right. So I kind of thought that might happen. And on John Deere tractors, what they do, they have an electric fuel pump on some of their models, they have a T and it feeds the excess fuel back to the tank. So I went and got me a brass T and teed it after the electric fuel pump and before the carburetor and then this hose is going to go back to the tank. So I, I didn't want to run a long hose, so I went and got me some quarter inch tubing. And I'm gonna run the quarter inch tubing back to here. So I contacted our friends at Filler Neck Supply, not Hiller Neck, Filler Neck. And I got me a four inch piece of inch and a half tubing, beat it on both ends. Then I drilled and tapped it, put a 1 8 barbed hose fitting in there, and then I welded it. So I'll run that line, quarter inch line, and then a short piece of hose off this line to here. And then that'll feed the fuel back and relieve the pressure. I already tested it and it worked. It worked just fine and ran fine. So that, that works.
So that's where we're at. So now I gotta run my line and I got my little handy dandy nunchucks, tubing benders, and then I'm gonna start bending this and mounting this so I got my return. And then I can put my fender on, put the back plate on, and uh, we'll keep moving forward. All right, I got my, my little nipple from Filler Neck Supply, not Hiller Neck Supply, like this redneck. And I uh, welded in a fitting and then I ran that return line. So this is the return. And then this is ready for the fender to go on. Now if you notice, I got the rear end out of it because I'm working on a differential and I'm gonna show you my differential I came up with. So I was thinking, you know, maybe I should support this axle a little more since I got all this weight hanging off the end. So I found some inch and a quarter flange bearings that fit on this hub, because this hub has got a little bit of a shoulder on it. So all I had to do was lightly sand it down to get this to fit on there. And then I'll probably bolt it to some metal back there and that'll help, help with the axle. The axle's pretty strong, but I thought, you know what? Maybe I should add some outer bearings to kind of help support it. So we're going to go on the bench and I'm going to show you how I came up with my little differential idea. So this thing is hard to move around because it doesn't have a differential. And I knew that was probably going to be a problem. I just didn't know how bad it was going to be. When you're in the snow and in the dirt, it's fine. You know, it dries fine. But when you're on pavement, it's hard to get it to steer. And, and it, I said, you know, I need to come up with some kind of differential idea. So I had three different ideas that I was working on. One, I was going to use a, an electric uh, mower clutch, you know, the PTO clutch for the, for the deck, one of those electric ones, a big magnet, and then I was going to have a switch on the dash where I could engage it and disengage it, but the alternating system on that Honda isn't strong enough, so I'd probably have to wire up a, a, a separate alternator so I'd have enough power, because that, that electric clutch would probably kill the battery after a while and then I thought well how about a blade clutch for like a push mower you know you got those push mowers where you can start them and they run and then you engage a lever and the blade starts spinning I thought maybe I can put one of them on there off a Honda walk behind mower and then I was looking at that and I thought you know that's only on like a little one inch shaft and I thought, yeah, that's gonna be a lot of work. I need to come up with something simple and easy. And this is what I did. I took this hub and I had it cut. And I got me an inch and a quarter bolt. And I had my friend Sean machined it out so we could put this inch and a quarter by five inch long bolt through it. And then he took this half and he machined a pocket on the inside and one on the outside. And we put bearings in there. So there's bearings in there. And I thought, you know, I gotta come up with a way to, to lock it. Cause I wanna, you know, I don't wanna have one wheel peel. Maybe when I'm in the dirt or in the snow, you know, I want both wheels to spin. So I took out one of the studs and I put a 7 16 because that's what these studs are, 7 16 fine thread. I took a bolt, and this is a bolt out of a uh, blade clutch, a PTO clutch on a lawnmower. They got that long 7 16 fine thread. And we machined a hole in here, and I put a hardened bushing in there. So this thing's out, and when it gets to the hole, now I got it, now it locks. So what I'm gonna do is, on this sleeve, I already made one to make sure it was gonna work. I'm gonna cut a groove in there and I'll put a roll pin in there. 
and the roll pin will ride up on this on this groove. This piece here is going to be welded to the rim, the rear wheel rim. I'm going to weld this onto the rim, and then you'll pick it up and then turn it. So it'll come up through that, come up through that groove, the roll pin, and then I'll be able to turn it, and then it'll lock in a little tiny groove here to hold it out of the way, so it'll spin. Pretty neat idea, huh? There's my, there's my differential. So all I gotta do is reinstall everything and then I'll show it to you. Okay, I got my differential on. Got the rear end reinstalled in the Jeep. And then here's my locker that I was telling you I made. So I turn that. And it finds the hole there and locks in. Now I got Posi. And then when I want to release it, pull it out. Now I got differential again. And I can actually grab that from the seat when I'm sitting in the seat. I can lock this in. Pretty nifty, huh? <laughs> yeah. I've been working on the rear fenders on the Palomino. And what I did is I kind of lowered them one inch, this inner fender. Because it was up here, I wanted to give a little bit more space between here and the inner fender. So I lowered it one inch. And these fenders, this Palomino, this thing is all bolted together. Everything's bolted together. Got bolt holes everywhere. So I want to eliminate a lot of that hardware. I want it like a clean look. I want it smooth on the outside. So this, this thing was bolted on. So I welded it in, and this inner fender was bolted on, but since I lowered it, I'm going to weld this part in. So I've already got this one ready to go. And one thing I wanted to do was capture all the nuts on the other side. Because I hate when I have to undo something and then you got to hold the other side with a wrench. And I wanted to keep this panel removable, this inner panel. So that way I could get my filler neck and my tail light and this other light I've got on there, this original light. So I wanted to be able to, without taking the whole rear fender off, be able to remove this inner panel. So I welded quarter 20 nuts to the back. And then I welded up any kind of holes that weren't being used. There were a lot of holes in it that needed to be welded up. I don't know what they were for, some of them. And then I welded this. In. Remember I lowered it an inch, so I got this all straight and welded in. I welded some nuts for my tail light because I want it to sit flush. Welded up all those other holes like I showed you on this one. I got to do all, all this I've got to do to this now, this other side. But I want to get this one in and on because it's got the filler neck. And another thing I did is I bought a nut cert tool. You know what a nut cert tool is? It's a tool that has these little inserts that have threads in them. About quarter inch, three eighths worth of threads. It's almost like welding a nut on the back, but without welding. And you can use it on sheet metal. So I put four nut certs here to hold the filler neck on and then I used four of them to hold this light on. And then I used two in the back on here that's going to hold the rear fender on.
because this metal here is a little thicker than the metal that the fenders are made out of. So I don't care if that sticks up a little bit. That's the only downside to the Nutzer tool is you got that little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch or so that sticks up. So you know you have to compensate for that. And then I went ahead and welded nuts in here too on the back of this. And there's some nuts welded in here. So just about anything that's being bolted down on this thing, if it's got nuts on the other side, if it's not thick enough to thread or thick enough to put a nut shirt in, then I'm going to weld nuts on the back side or use the nut shirt. So you're probably wondering, oh, i never seen that nut shirt tool, Terrell. Tell us more about it. Okay. Here's the nut shirt tool. This is the one I bought off of, you know, my favorite store, eBay. I think you can get them at Harbor Freight, but there's all different kits with all different inserts and some are metric, some are metric and American. This one's a metric and standard. So I'm gonna show you how to put this 1024 nut shirt in on one of the fenders that's gonna hold this other light on, on that other fender. So you pick out the size you want. This is 1024. And you get this adapter or insert that goes in the nutsert tool. So you're gonna wanna open it up, open up the wings, and there's a little spring-loaded collar in here. So you take the, the insert and hold that collar down and thread the insert into here until it stops. And then turn it until that collar springs up to lock it in place. Then you got this other part that goes on top and you can screw that down. Now they give you a wrench with it if you want to tighten that down, but I just do it by hand. Then you take your nut sir, you're gonna have to have a drill gauge, and then you find what hole the nut sir fits in. So for this 1024, it's 930 seconds. Then screw the nut sir onto the tool with the handles out, and then We'll drill a hole in here. See, I already got one installed. Drilled it out to 932. Put it in there. Make sure it's square and in your piece of metal. And then squeeze the handles together. But don't, you know, break it. Just squeeze it till it's tight. Pull back down on the handles and then unscrew the tool out of the nut shirt. So there. Now you got about three eighths of an inch of 1024 threads in there. But like I said, it sticks up a little bit. So in this case, what I'll do is when I mount this, I'll make a gasket that goes behind it. So when it's bolted down, you know, you're going to have that little gap behind it. So I'll make a little rubber gasket to go behind it. So there, that's a nut shirt tool. Pretty handy, you might want to pick one up. This one wasn't too expensive, I think it was like $60. And then it came with 10 inserts of each size of these that came. And then I went and bought some additional inserts because 10 wasn't going to be enough. So you might want, to, whoop, might want to pick up some extra inserts. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use stainless steel button head screws and screw everything back together. Put my filler neck in 
And I'm gonna mount this fender on the Palomino. We're gonna put the wheel on, put the tire and wheel on, and we'll take it for a ride. See how it works. Got the fender all mounted in, nice and sturdy. Got my fuel port in there. See, it, it don't look bad with a minimal amount of hardware. See, that looks pretty good. Got the tail light in. And this light, which is either gonna be a turn signal or a brake light, I haven't decided yet. So let's drive it. I got my, uh, my homemade differential locked out, so we're gonna have one wheel peel. stand them tires are a lot of tractor tires and there's still a lot of play in the steering wheel so this crappy Ford steering box I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to get something different time to get rid of these boots put on some new boots wow what a difference new boots made you know put new boots on something it can take the stinkiest turd and make it smell pretty again just by putting new boots on it. So I went with white powder coat on the rims because white kind of goes with anything and it still gives it that old school Jeep look, I think. So that's why I went with white. And then I had another rim powder coated. I got to buy the tire yet. This is going to be the spare. So I'm going to mount a spare tire on here somewhere. I don't know if I'm going to mount it like this, like they used to do on the Jeep, or if I'm gonna mount it in the back on the tailgate, but I'm gonna put a spare tire on it. So I did have a little bit of a clearance issue, and that's with the front bumper. Plus this bumper is kind of bent. So I'm gonna make some spacers, kind of space that out a little bit, straighten it. Or, I don't know, maybe I'll make a new bumper. I don't know yet. Well, that was the only clearance issue. But look at these tires. They came real close in the back here. I got lucky. I usually don't get lucky on stuff like this, but I got lucky with these tires. They sure look good. So then, I went on eBay. My favorite store again, like I told you. And I got me a steering box. This is for Vega. This is what hot rodders use when they build hot rods. So I got a whole steering box kit, new pitman arm, came with a U-joint, and a bracket that you bolt to the steering box, and then you can weld it, and then you can just take it off. So I'm going to have to get all that mounted. So I know what you're saying. Tara, take it out again. Let's see how it runs with those new boots on it. That was one wheel peel. Let's lock in the differential now and see what happens.
that fit. We still got a long way to go on this thing. I still got to take the motor out and rebuild it put the hood on, get the fenders on, but I'm not going to have enough time to do that before we take it to Portland. It runs the way it is now. So I'm going to concentrate on getting this other fender on and the tailgate, put the hood on so we can take it to Portland. And then after I bring it back from that, I'll concentrate on more of the wiring and stuff because it, it's crunch time here. And you can see I got all these tractors I got to fix too. So I hope that was enough dinner for you on part five of the Palomino. So, stay tuned, keep watching this channel, follow me, Facebook and Instagram, and there's your dinner on part five, Roof Palomino. Woo!